Hi guys, wanted to put together a short video on some ideas if you guys are out there without power but have the ability to get around and hopefully find a generator or something to get at least the essentials going. Here in Texas we've been without power since about uh, Sunday night. The following morning I uh, got up early and uh, started to wire up a uh, 2,000 watt inverter that I had bought to use in a solar panel project. Thankfully it came in handy. The reason I decided to use the Yaris to run the inverter is it's very fuel efficient, extremely reliable, and uh, not too difficult to connect. What we have currently running off of the inverter is the refrigerator. It's a full-size refrigerator. LED lighting, floodlights that I had, uh, that I use for my vapor blasting system. Our Wi-Fi, our fiber modem, laptops, cell phones, and uh, the, the occasional power tool if I need it. We can charge power tool batteries that are cordless with no problem. It will not run a coffee maker. Uh, definitely will not run a uh, microwave. But with those basic essentials, you can pretty much get through just about anything, provided that you have enough fuel. I'll go over the connections in case you guys wanted to do something like this. I know right now it's next to impossible to find uh, generator anywhere at least in the vicinity that's it if you can get to stores at all right now we're pretty much snowed in uh, about eight inches of snow on the ground and unless you're equipped with uh, chains or a lifted four-wheel drive vehicle with uh, snow tires it's going to be difficult to get around without potentially uh, getting yourself into more trouble let me go over the connections here under the hood The inverter is connected to the car battery directly using double lock cable. The maximum length for the inverter suggested by the manufacturer is six foot. The longer the, the run, the less effective the inverter will be. I chose to go with a three foot cable and that uh, puts the inverter far enough away that, it, that I don't have to keep the hood wide open and exposed to the elements. Behind the inverter you got the two connections and if you notice on the left side just above the negative wire there is a shielding cable, a ground cable. It's important that you connect that ground cable uh, to the earth and what I did here is it just comes out from underneath the inverter and uh, ties directly to this piece of flat bar that I just pounded into the ground. It's, it's in the ground about a foot. Drilled the hole and used a uh, sheet metal screw on it. This is sufficient for grounding your uh, electric appliances that you're going to be connecting to this. Most extension cords, unless it's like the little white one, they'll have the three pins on it. You got the, uh, the, the power pins on the, the, the flat ones and then you got the shielding pin that's the bottom one. The white cord that I have connected here is hooked up to a simple box fan and I'm using the box fan to keep the coolant in the radiator cool. It simulates the car driving down the road. It has been extremely reliable. We've been on the Yaris power station here for about two days. This is going on the third day. They're telling us that things should start to let up a little on Thursday. That'll be the, the, the last winter storm. Hopefully then by that time some of this snow would have melted. It's supposed to warm up today. I'm expecting more of this snow to melt. As the snow melts and makes it possible for us to get around, we should be able to pick up more fuel. As far as fuel consumption goes, the Yaris gets about 38 miles to the gallon under normal driving conditions. We've been running this car since uh, about uh, 11 o'clock on Monday. 
and it has gone through about uh, three quarters of a tank of fuel. The gas tank is 11 gallons. We've been blessed to have very uh, wonderful neighbors that offered to make a run for us to pick up some fuel while they were out and about. They have 4x4 vehicles and getting around was not an issue for them. Uh, we're blessed that they were able to come through for us with uh, seven and a half gallons of fuel, which is more than enough to keep this vehicle running for another three days. You have to make do with what you have and you have to solve problems as they come up. One more thing, guys. If your refrigerator turns on and starts to bog down the alternator on the car that's idling, it, it will want to shut off what we did to solve that problem is just accelerate it slightly above idle so right now the Yaris is running at about uh, 900 rpm as you can see what I did here for the gas pedal is uh, a little box of refried beans and a little spacer there to make sure it doesn't press down too hard on it fiddle around with it until you get the car idle just smooth enough that under load it's not going to stall and that'll that'll do it so if you can see right now guys there's the current fuel car has been running for uh since monday around 11 o'clock and uh we've had to fill it with about uh, five about six gallons of fuel so six gallons of fuel since uh monday and it started off with a half a tank. So this will run for another three days, no problem. Guys, get creative out there. Solve problems as they come up. And if you can find one of these inverters, I encourage you to pick one up. So here it is right here. I'll put all the links up in the description. It's a 2,000 watt inverter, and it even has a power level. So as you use your appliances, your power level will, 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 will go up, uh, letting you know that you're, you're hitting about the threshold. Uh, one of the other issues that we have is that w without power, our neighborhood is supplied by a water station that is on the top of a hill. Those pumps need to pump water out of the ground to fill those tanks. And if you're lucky enough to live downhill, you will have some water for some time, as we did. The first day and a half, we didn't have any issues with water. We did have water pressure. However, after the second day, the water pressure started to diminish quickly, and we realized that we had to come up with another solution for flushing the toilets, washing dishes, boiling water, providing for our livestock. That's when we thought about using the snow. Uh, at first, I was melting snow using a propane burner that we have for a turkey fryer that we used several years ago. This worked out really well, but it's very time consuming and uses up propane that later could be used for a different purpose. What we've done here is I've, I've fashioned up a piece of flashing. So as you can see, there's a little piece of flashing right there on the roof. And we're just collecting water that's dripping off the roof and filling up this bin. So this is a concrete mixing bin. We've emptied it out about three times already, mostly for flushing the toilet. The bare essentials, guys, you have to make do with what you have. Firewood, so go out, forage, collect as much wood as you can. Thankfully here in Texas, most of the houses are equipped with a fireplace. And if you can uh, gather wood or have access to some kind of wood, that'll, that'll keep you warm at night. At least when the temperatures go down. One thing I will tell you is I used to rely on an electric chainsaw. That is my number one thing to purchase once this dilemma passes. Will be a fuel and a gas powered chainsaw. That we, we have plenty of trees here that could easily be sacrificed for firewood to keep our families warm. However, without a way to come out there and, and cut them down, there's just no... There's no uh, getting around that issue if, if you're faced with uh, 
not being able to find limbs on the ground. Thankfully, the winter storms did down some limbs. Some of them were pretty large. And what you can do to get creative to break up some of these limbs without the uh, use of a chainsaw is find yourself some trees like this that are close together. Right, so these two trees are very close together and they're robust. What you can do here is just stick your limb in between that, that V and then just push up against this side to, and it'll break it. So you can cut down a lot of those long limbs using just Mother Nature. You just got to look around and get creative. All right, guys, stay safe out there. Keep your families warm. Till next time, God bless.